In the last decade, China has gone from one of the poorest economies in the world to the second biggest total GDP in purchasing power parity dollars. Nonetheless, its gross domestic product per capita is still much lower than developed countries. We wanted to know how China has developed, and more specifically, how dependent it was on its political opposite, the United States. So let's go back in time and get a little overview of Sino-American relations. After more than 20 years of civil war, the communists were led to victory by Mao Zedong. In 1949, he proclaimed the foundation of the People's Republic of China. During his dictatorship, farming was collectivized and labor-intensive industry was introduced. However, this led the country into famine and poverty. 1972 was a turning point in the Sino-American relations, since American President Nixon traveled to Beijing to meet Mao Zedong. It was one of the first reconciliation between both countries, in which they desired to normalize relations over their common enemy, the Soviet Union. Moreover, in 1983, for the first time, a Chinese president, Li Xianlian, visited the United States. In 1989, China's open-door policy opened the country to foreign investment and encouraged the development of a market economy and private sector. The relationship between the United States and China from a trading perspective has been characterized by solid growth in the last three decades, which is reflected by the U.S. constantly being the largest export trading partner of China with a steady 17.5% partner share. The analysis we have conducted shows that the Chinese trade surplus with the United States, meaning the difference between China's total exports to the U.S. and total imports from the U.S., has been increasing at a rate of 766% between 2000 and 2016, topping $358 billion in 2015. The next graph emphasizes the width of the gap between exports and imports over the years. An interesting fact is that the U.S. imports are currently being replaced in China by goods or services from other countries, as the percentage of U.S. partner share in Chinese imports has been decreasing over time. This trend has led to a univocal dependence of China to the U.S. market, which represents a solid stream of income. This graph in particular shows how the U.S. exports influence tremendously the overall Chinese balance of trade. The red line, indeed, represents the balance of trade without U.S. exports, which, as we can see, would become negative. This last analysis illustrates how the loss of the U.S. market would directly impact the Chinese GDP over time. In 2016, for instance, it would have caused a reduction of 3.2% in GDP, meaning a loss of $385 billion. Now let's look at trade in practice rather than numbers and theories. The currency of China is a renminbi, and one unit of the renminbi is known as the yuan. Previously, China had a fixed currency policy where the renminbi was closely pegged to the US dollar. This system stabilized the Chinese economy, and research suggests that it reduces the risk and increases the attractiveness of its currency to investors. During his presidential campaign, Donald Trump made quite a big deal about China. 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 And argued that China was a currency manipulator devaluing its currency in order to take advantage of the U.S. But is this actually true? We looked at the Big Mac Index, which compares the price of Big Macs around the world and determines whether the real exchange rate between currencies is at the right level based on the principle of purchasing power parity. As shown on the graph, the RMB has constantly been undervalued by at least 40% over the last decades. This means Chinese exports are relatively cheaper for other countries, an unfair competitive advantage, according to Trump. According to the International Monetary Fund's annual reports on exchange arrangements, China has repeatedly changed its foreign exchange policy over the past decades. The policy of the People's Bank of China was classified as a conventional peg to the United States dollars from 2003 to 2005. From 2006 to 2008, the renminbi was allowed to gradually appreciate under policy classified as a crawling peg to the U.S. dollar. And between 2008 and 2010, it was stabilized relative to the dollar. 
In 2010, the policy changed to a crow-like arrangement relative to the US dollar. In 2015, the China Foreign Exchange Trade System, a division of the People's Bank of China, published an exchange rate index of 13 currencies. Although the US dollar makes up around 30%, exchange rate movements of the RMB are driven by a basket of currencies. This was a move towards a flexible exchange rate, but the flexibility is in fact limited. Furthermore, a large part of China's dollar reserves is invested in US Treasury bonds. It is estimated that China is the largest single nation holder of US bonds with approximately 1.25 trillion US dollars of these securities. As a consequence, one can argue that China holds political leverage over the US. American and Chinese companies in the energy, automobile, technology and other industries also recently signed deals which amount to more than $250 billion in value, showing once again the mutual importance and reliance of those countries in terms of trade. Although China has developed greatly in the past decades, we must not forget that it is still not a developed economy and is slowly moving in the direction of market forces. Former Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke has advised that China should depend less on exports and use domestic demand and investment as a source of growth in order to be more sustainable. Nevertheless, the US is also becoming more dependent on China regarding the North Korea issue and China can take advantage of a situation to increase its economic leverage on the US. Only the future will tell.